I'm in the process of mounting my inverter. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to install a half inch piece of plywood, sort of a strip. This one here, that's four inches wide. Middle seam here, as you can see, my wall's slightly bowed. And so what I need to do is because this thing weighs a lot and is flat, obviously has a flat bottom, it needs a flat surface to mount to. It's going to be mounted vertically here. I need a flat surface to secure the inverter to. So this half inch little spacer bit is gonna get attached here and account for the convex shape here that's happening. And then I'm going to apply a larger piece of half inch plywood on top of that, creating a nice flat surface. And I will secure it to the stud behind little finicky plywood here. And then basically sandwich everything together with some PL, making sure it's you know nice and secure so that this thing has lots of meat to get screwed into. Here we go. Okay, so I've installed the board that will be the mounting plate for my inverter. It's secured is that this half inch piece is self-tapped and secured and glued to the, the structural studs in front. And then this piece here is glued and screwed into that first layer and then also secured with self-tappers. You see here uh, with the stud behind the wall. So that is all nice and in there, very sturdy. It's not going anywhere. I'm confident now that I can secure my inverter to that piece of plywood. So this is roughly, I think, the layout of how it's gonna work. Battery, inverter, heater, charge controller, fuse block, and you know all the sort of cables to accompany it. I'm gonna use these heavy duty screws, leg screws, I guess you call them. I, I'm trusting these because these are actually what came with the trailer in the floor to, to hold down as an anchor for the for like a, a four-wheeler or a uh, motorcycle for example so um, you know these are sort of heavy duty they're nice and thick and basically to install them I'm just using a 11 millimeter socket uh, with an adapter on my impact drill and I will install eight of them and basically just as an added security uh, I will box out under this inverter to sort of support it yeah I'm just gonna install this and then hopefully it doesn't fall off <laughs> Oh man, that's solid in there. Wow, okay. Okay, so that's the inverter installed. It's now freestanding. Yeah, okay, this turned out pretty good. I'm uh, I'm happy with that. Nice clean install. That is sort of the biggest component of this whole solar system. And this was the one I was like kind of the most worried about. But honestly, I'm uh, kind of happy that that's in there now. All right, so what I've done is I've just added some pieces of plywood to the wall so that I have a nice solid surface to mount the components, uh, like the fuse block and stuff. And you can see I've already gone ahead and mounted the charge controller. I actually put a uh, half inch strapping, sort of a little furring strip to space it off of this aluminum panel. Screws are screwed into this piece of plywood and it's separate from the piece that's mounted to the aluminum. Also offset nicely so that I can run wires behind it and uh, my fuse block will be around here and so I can route those all nicely 
behind that sort of little space there. I'm just gonna keep trucking along here and uh, here we go. This is how I'm gonna protect my 120 volt system. I got a small little breaker, 30 amp breaker box, and then I have a 15 amp breaker. This is all I'm gonna need because I only have one circuit and I'm not drawing anything more than 15 amps. So that should be plenty. This will be wired in after the inverter, so on the output. And I will be installing this probably around this area here. I think that's a good little spot for it. Moving along with installing all the electrical components and the wires. I went to the store and was able to pick up wire to length. Wasn't the cheapest thing, so beware of that. So this is my two watt cable. They didn't have any in black, so I just ordered what I need in red and I'm gonna cut the size. I'll just electrical tape the negative one in black. Big heavy duty cable, this thing is massive. And I have some eight gauge, some four gauge, and then this is some more 14.3 for my 120 volt system. Most of the components have been mounted. Shore power wires that's gonna be hooked up into the input. And then the output will go out to this breaker box, 15 amp breaker box. And then from here, it's gonna to go to my two outlets. So one outlet is gonna live around here on this wall. And the other one runs to the in the wall behind to the outlet on the kitchen here, which has already been installed. And then the battery, which is there, will be installed around here. And those will go into the DC, 12 volt uh, positive negative. Uh, those require the big heavy duty cable. That's what this is for. Within that from the battery, it's gonna go to the 12 volt fuse block, which powers the lights, the fan, the heater and a couple other little things. This is the cables for the solar panel coming down to the roof. Those will get routed down nice and tidy, sort of similar to the other wiring into the charge controller. And the charge controller is gonna be connected to the, obviously the, the battery uh, to charge it. We'll be mounting all my circuit breaker stuff and the bus bar, the kill switch and the shunt. Um, that will kind of all happen at once on here. And so I'll tune back in once I'm done that. All right, so I just finished the first pass of wiring here. This is the two watt cable to the inverter. So this mess here that you see is I have my cable going from a battery to cut off, which is off right now. And then to my 200 amp breaker switch. From my breaker switch, I'm going to pause the bus bar and then that will be feeding the fuse block and the charge controller. And then it's also going to the inverter. Now, just time to run the wires for the negative and uh you know pretty much near there almost done nothing's torqued down or anything yet and you know i will clean everything up with electrical tape and dielectric grease and all that but uh this is just kind of test fitting the wires cut getting them cut the size and all that so yeah all right so everything's still a bit of a mess but everything's connected except for my negative post that's the last thing i have to do I'll give you a walkthrough around all the wiring here. I know it looks a little hectic. I tried my best to keep it organized. It's, you know, not the prettiest wiring that you've probably seen, but if it works, it works. <laughs> so um, here, I'm gonna give you a little tour. So we'll start with the positive side, the live side. So running from the battery, I'm going to my kill switch, which is currently in the off position. From there, I'm going to a 200 amp circuit breaker. From the circuit breaker, I'm going to a positive bus bar. And then this positive bus bar is feeding a few things. The first thing on the end here is going to the inverter. The second one is going up to a 30 amp breaker, going to my charge controller. The third item is going up to a 100 amp breaker and going to my 12 volt fuse block. So that is the positive side. Now for the negative side, Obviously I go from the battery post to my shunt and then my shunt you can see there's a couple things connected to that. So the little red wire going to the positive bus bar is the positive feed for the shunt. From that you can see this gray wire that is going down to my chassis ground. Also from the shunt going up it's going to my negative bus bar. And then on the very end, you can see again, it's going to the inverter. The other wire here is going to the charge controller. And then the other one is going to the fuse block. 
what you see here these dangling wires is my 120 volt AC so I have my input wire here my output is going to my breaker box there with a 15 amp breaker that I haven't wired up yet because I need to install my plug somewhere around here and then from that it's going to feed also the wire that runs in the wall to the outlet on the door. The moment has finally come. We're going to turn this thing on for the first time. <sighs> Nerve wracking. <laughs> oh, the, <laughs> the charge controller battery came on. That's a good sign, right? Let's see if the uh, lights work. Yeah, the lights work. Look at that! <laughs> it works! Oh. Alright. So I'm just reading through my manual, making sure I got everything right and wired correctly. So now I'm going to turn the inverter on. Let's see what happens. It's supposed to beep for one minute, I think. Okay, good. Not one whole minute. That was annoying. <laughs> it's on, so that's a good sign. Look at that. I got 119 volt output and zero volt input. I'm excited to uh, plug in to shore power and see if this charges the battery. Just connected my trailer to shore power. So one of the main reasons why I bought this inverter is because it's also a charger. So you can see it's actually charging my battery now. So that's basically everything wired in and operational now. Very exciting and I still have lots to do on the trailer but I think this was one of the hardest parts and I was putting it off because I was nervous because I have never done any of this stuff before. But uh, this is super rewarding seeing that this stuff is actually operational. You know, my lights, my fan. Everything is functional, everything is working off this battery now. I saw some settings to figure out and some little troubleshooting things I guess. Uh, but for the most part everything seems to be turning on and functional. I'm not getting any errors, so that's great. Very exciting, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, here we go, on to the next thing.